Well, this is the first and probably only time I'll ever do this, but <sighs> um, this is just kind of an overall view of the depression in the Civilian Conservation Corps. So, here goes nothing. The Civilian Conservation Corps is important because it literally saved many people's lives and helped them survive the Depression. The Depression during the 1930s is marked by the stock market crash of 1929. The collapse of the economy around the world destroyed many people's lives. It seemed the whole country was poor. The Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, was a government program to create jobs for young men in the U.S. and preserve our environment. I became interested in the CCC when I visited some caves in South Dakota. I learned that the CCC was responsible for making paths and stairs down into Wind Cave, doing, building many of the buildings and roads around there, and doing lots of projects in the Black Hills, as well as the rest of the country. The Great Depression was a very hard time in history. Many peop millions of people were unemployed and suffered from having no money, food, or other necessities. Mil uh, they lost their homes and many were forced to move around trying to find jobs or a better situation. The government and some charitable right groups tried to help by handing out food, but they couldn't reach everyone and there wasn't ever enough to go around. People would stand in lines waiting for bread for hours. There were no formal, um, formal mechanisms such as food stamps in place. Many, many people bl blame the President Herbert Hoover for not doing more to help stop the Great Depression. They thought the government had a responsibility to take care of the people. Other people, including President Herbert Hoover, felt people could and should take care of themselves, and even take care of the government. Government wasn't supposed to support, it was just to organize people. Herbert Hoover believed that government should stay small and out of people's lives. The events and pro politics of the Great Depression, not to mention programs like the CCC, left a lasting legacy. Of course, you can see that legacy on the ground with their projects, but our current economic situation reflects much of went on and many of the decisions that were made all those years ago. After, Fra after Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president in 1932, he started the New Deal. He was from the other political camp, opposite Hoover, that felt government should be responsible for the people and their welfare. The New Deal was an economic approach that identified work that needed to be done, created a series of programs that turned into hun employment for hundreds of thousands of jobless Americans. The New Deal included the Works Project Administration, the Tennessee Valley Authority, and the, the, and the Federal Housing Authority, just to name a few. It created social security and other welfare programs. It created social security and other welfare programs designed to protect people in hard times. Even bank insurance, the FDIC, was created at this time. If I were older and more experienced, I might make a joke about where that had gotten us. <laughs> the earliest of these projects, the CCC, started in March 1933, just weeks after Roosevelt was inaugurated. It was originally named the Emergency Conservation Works, but quickly changed to the CCC. It was also known as Roosevelt's Tree Army. When it started, there were around 250,000 men. At its biggest, the CCC had about 500,000 guys, not including supervisors, teacher, and local experienced men. But it was only meant to have 300,000. In 1936, they thought about reducing from the 500,000 back down, but it was so popular and the people liked it so much that they flooded Washington with mail to keep the CCC going. Over time, the CCC employed more than 3 million men. Wait, dang it. I still don't know how to do this that well. The CC, wait. the CCC had many camps around the country. Sources report between 2,700 and 5,000 permanent and temporary camps at different times. The camps were places where the men of the CCC lived. These were like little towns. Some even had stores where the guys could get a few personal things. One of the more important aspects of camp life was the opportunity for education. The men could receive academic lessons and vocational training in their school. Education is always critical, but even more so during hard economic times. 
According to many sources, the first meal after they arrived was the best thing. Many of the guys hadn't eaten very well and were really happy to have three hots in a cot, which meant three good meals a day in a bed to sleep in. The next day, they started their training. They were trained to use axes, build houses, drive bulldozers. They were taught to repair mechanical objects and many other things they might need during their hitch. They were also given the opportunity to have schooling. Some chose to learn music, how to cook, radio repair, and job skills. Some guys needed the most basic things, like how to read and write. They got lots of physical training and were taught military skills. The CCC hoped to make them all strong as healthy, as well as teach them job skills. The CCC paid around $30 a month. Most of it was sent home to the enrollee's family. The guy only kept $5 for spending money. The guys usually spent their $5 on their nights or weekends in town. They went to pool halls and soda shops, and, and they probably watched movies. I would guess they also bought stamps and mailed letters to their loved ones and friends at home. In other words, they acted just like guys today would. Because Roosevelt thought putting people to work was important, and because he thought the U.S. was doing a bad job of protecting our natural resources, he accomplished both with the CCC. Many CCC projects were located in undeveloped areas that either were or would become national forests and parks. One of these sites was Wind Cave National Park. The Black Hills in general benefited from many different CCC projects. There are a number of temporary camps recorded throughout the area, as well as the better known formal camps. The CCC at Wind Cave was one of the earliest camps to be created. In addition to developing the cave, they built roads, bridges, buildings, drainage ditches. They worked on fences and range management, creating grazing areas with water sources for cattle. They planted a lot of trees. After a while, they were sent to work in other places, and eventually the camp was split, with part of the guys going to the Badlands, which later became a national monument. A huge part of the CCC training and, and work was firefighting. Some of the major work, not just in this area, but especially in Washington and Oregon, was fire control, with the CCC boys suppressing some of the biggest fires on record in those states. The Depression ended about 1939. The drought that had made things worse, called the Dust Bowl, had ended shortly before that, and farming was starting to get back to normal. Things were slowly improving in the cities, with more people getting their jobs back. Europe had already gone to war because the Nazis were starting to get nasty. Even though many people thought we should stay out of it, we were starting to send things to England. That created jobs, and companies began making money off weapons. We didn't officially get into war until December 1941 because of Pearl Harbor, but the Great Depression was officially over by then. Between 1936 and 1939, the size of the CCC was slowly reduced to about 300,000 men. The young men of the CCC were needed as soldiers, so even though it was not officially canceled until 1942, the era was ending. The causes of the Depression are very complicated. The ways people figured to help end it were also very compli complicated, but the CCC was one of the most valuable, in my opinion. It left a lasting impact on our country in the form of natu natural preservation of resources, as well as a healthier, better, edu better educated generations. I am privileged to be a part of this event, and I've learned so much about the CCC, but more than that, the huge impact that history has on modern times. It is very important that kids study history and learn how and why we got where we are today. We need to look no further than our current economic situation to see why. Museums like this one make history much more uh, interesting and accessible. The most powerful tool the CCC had, oh, hands-on education was the most powerful tool the CCC had, and that continues to be true. Walking on the path they built made this part of history real for me. I hope this museum and the people it honors will continue to work toward the education of future generations. Yay.